17-year-old American expat living in Germany, but not for much longer because I'm moving to the Netherlands soon. So I thought that this was a fun idea for one of my last couple living in Germany videos. Over the past two and a half years, I have experienced quite a number of culture shocks and I thought today I would share them with you. But first, couple disclaimers. To all the Germans that may or may not be watching this video, please do take what I say with a grain of salt. Uh, I have been here for almost three years now, but I am still learning things every single day. Number two is that I live in southern Germany between Munich and Stuttgart, so I don't want to generalize all of Germany. There are definitely differences throughout the country. And the final one is that I also live in an international community because I go to an international school, so I have different perspectives different people, maybe not the typical Deutsch experience. I'm going to be talking about things like the language barrier, the food, the drinking age, public transport, making friends, school, etc, 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 etc. So I say we just jump right into it. Should we start with food? I feel like we should start with food. I have a lot to say about it. No surprise there. Um, so bakeries, even the ones like within the grocery stores, are very, very good and very fresh. I feel that they focus a lot more on quality and are much more content with keeping things casual and small. They're not trying to create some confectionery empire. They're just there and they do what they do, people get what they need, and it just, it works, right? Well, that doesn't work, does it? It works. It works. So like I said, they focus on what they're good at. There is not much fast food. I believe that there is one or two McDonald's in my entire town. But you think about driving down a street in the US and you see McDonald's, okay, give it a minute. Okay, McDonald's, okay, give it a minute. Burger King, Taco Bell, Wendy's, Culver. Here, not so much. You gotta, you gotta put some effort into getting the fast food. So people do think it's actually quite cool when they get it because it's a very rare thing. Like I'll see people flexing with their McDonald's or their KFC. And I'm like, all right, all right. But again, it is very rare. I feel like people just put a bit more effort into their food here. I think I said this in a past video. Yeah, let's talk about how lazy we can be with our food sometimes, just as Americans. And even when you do order fast food, the portion sizes are much smaller, especially like in drinks. Like that is a big difference. The American small is like the German large. And I think that's consistent throughout the rest of Europe as well. Speaking of drinks, there is like little to no ice here. In America, there's usually an ice machine built into your fridge, or you can get it whenever you go out to a restaurant. Here it's quite different. So yeah, drinks are served at room temperature. We're still talking about food now, but I want to move into the culture around like meals. One of the biggest differences is the fact that you can go to a cafe or a restaurant, order a coffee with your friends, and sit there for the rest of the afternoon. And you will. It's not like the options there, but no one takes advantage of it. It's like that is the idea. You want to go out for food, that's your event. That's what you're gonna go do. And I personally love it. I think it's mostly due to the tip system being different. Workers have a much higher minimum wage income and people who are bartenders, waiters, whatever it be, get a higher commission from the actual place they work and it, they're not so tip dependent. In fact, a lot of the times people just don't even tip because there's not much of a reason to. So in America, it's more like, all right, get in, get out, get my tips and get the next people in and then get their tips and then get these tips and then I gotta, you know, get paid and it makes sense. But in Europe, it's a lot more like, all right, you're here and you'll be here for a while. The final little subcategory for food is grocery shopping, which is a terrifying experience. I will not lie, it scares me. Let me, let me act this out for you, all right? I'm the little checkout person. Your stuff's coming up the little conveyor belt super slowly, and then all of a sudden it's... They throw that shit at you! It's like a game of, like, catch. You're over here with your bag, like, trying to get all the stuff that they're you know, chucking. That's really not that dramatic, but it is a much more get in, get out situation than the restaurants are, that's for sure. Also, people tend to buy their groceries daily. If that, maybe even like per meal. When I go to a supermarket here, I see people checking out with an average of like five to 15 total items. I say 15 is even pretty excessive. And then yeah, they come back the next day or later that day or whatever. Um, there's also the markets, so people get a lot of their food fresh there on Saturdays and I think Tuesdays. But not Sundays, no, no. 
because everything is closed on Sundays in Germany. That's a huge one that I feel I'm still getting used to is just like nothing being open on Sundays except for like maybe a bakery. But yeah, it's pretty different. I think part of it is a religious thing, but it's mostly centered around just spending that day with your family. Gotta get two days worth of groceries on Saturday because we're not gonna have anything to eat on Sunday if not. Considering people do their grocery shopping daily, I mean, it's all connected. It's a cultural thing. My camera died. <laughs> it's been like three hours. So let's talk about the drinking age. And by the way, I promise that not all of these culture shocks will be about food and beverages. They just, a lot of them happen to be. For those of you who are not aware, the drinking age in Germany is 16 for things like beer and wine, and then 18 for all alcohol, like hard alcohol. And I'm sure that lots of Europeans know this, but the drinking age in the States for all alcoholic beverages is 21 years of age. So when I first got to Germany and I was like, what, 14 years old getting a drink with my parents, I was like, this is weird. This doesn't feel right. I thought it was strange and I thought you couldn't justify it, but it's actually quite smart. And this is something that I really think the US needs to figure out. I'm gonna give you guys two scenarios, okay? Drinking is introduced around the teen years and then legally at 16. And you know, you're 16, you can buy alcohol, maybe you get a little, a little tube of sulfon. For the sake of the story, let's just say that you get really, really, really drunk. You go out to your car, wait! You don't have a car because you cannot drive at 16. Driving is introduced around 17 or 18, but honestly a lot of my friends didn't get their license until they were like 19 years old. Meaning, you can consume every alcoholic beverage in existence, legally, before you can operate an automated vehicle. A car. Well, why are you talking like this? Come on. Are you Basalfin? Now let me give you scenario number two. You're 20, you know how to drive, you're cruising, then you turn 21, and after so many years of having to ask your best friend's stepsister's older brother's fiance to buy you freaking beer for a party, you can finally go and buy it by yourself and be the fiance of the stepsister's older brother of your best friend. What? So you go and you get absolutely wasted because you've been waiting for like a little too long and then you hop in your car. Oh wait, you have a car! <laughs> See what I mean? See how that doesn't work out? So drunk driving is really just not as prominent of an issue. So that's reason number one, is because driving is introduced after alcohol. Reason number two is because you barely even need to freaking drive in Europe. You wanna know why? Because they got so much good public transport. I take the tram most places. I'm probably in my car once a month and it's driving back from the airport. <laughs> it's driving to and from the airport. Also in my town, public transport is free on Saturday. So if you want to go out Friday night and come back at like 12.30 AM Saturday morning, free. And then you go out Saturday night, you get there free and then you come back at 11.50 and it's free. There's your weekend. Go to bed early on Sunday because that's a school night. Don't get this off on a school night. Finally, reason number three is because there's not as much pressure to get drunk, meaning that it's a lot easier to have a designated driver. All I'm saying is it's harder and it's more rare, and I think that there's a lot more risk surrounding drunk driving or getting way too drunk or not understanding how to properly consume alcohol, even when you're a full functioning adult and member of society. Okay, that one got me talking. <laughs> that one got me talking. Now let's talk about the people, all right? This is the culture part. Let's talk about making some friends. I left Colorado uh, after my eighth grade year, so my last year of middle school, and I started high school in Europe, and I will finish high school in Europe, which is pretty cool. And because of that, I don't know what it's like to be at an American high school. I think making friends is a weaker comparison. I had a lot of trouble making friends in middle school. The friends I had were not that good. I did not, I really just didn't have good friends. And I had zero confidence. Within weeks of moving here, I was just surrounded by really lovely people and my confidence just like went boosted. I found it sehr einfach to just meet new people. Even with the language barrier, people are very welcoming. Not only do people just like accept differences, but they embrace them. And I think people look for differences, they find them very intriguing, as they are, as they should be. Like differences are cool, are you kidding? And another thing is I think people have a much more fluid perspective on things, meaning they're open to everybody's view and perspective on things. It's not so split down the middle like it can be in the States. So because of that, I've ended up feeling really comfortable here and really comfortable with myself. I like who I am when I'm with my friends here, all of them. They're all really amazing people and I have a lot of them and I'm very lucky. Now that being said, that being said, something I've noticed is the people that you know, the people that you're friends with are much warmer than what I'm used to. 
And again, I'm speaking from my experience here. But the strangers, those people that you don't know, are much colder. And it's not, not like a rude thing. It's not like Germans are mean, but just the societal, like, you're walking down the street in the States, you look at someone and you smile. Yeah, you freaking, hi. Maybe you say, what's up? I like your dog. Can I pet it? Here you're walking down the street, someone looks at you, they go, and go on with their day. Same thing with like grocery store workers. It's just a lot more like, you know, it's really just, I mean, if they don't know you, they don't gotta talk to you. And if they wanna talk to you, they will, right? Certain days I really do miss it. I just wanna smile at someone and have them smile back. But sometimes like when I'm back in the States and I'll walk into a Target and someone will be like, hey, how are you doing today? I'm like, whoa, hello. Keep it to yourself, thank you very much. Just trying to shop here, come on. So that was a big difference. And at first I was like, Germans are so mean. Everyone hates me here. Not true, just gotta get used to it. The final thing I'll talk about is the school system. I know that in Germany there's a couple programs. There's like the Abitur, there's like Gymnasium Schule. I do something different. I'm at an international school. I do the IB diploma, which is a British course. And I think the biggest one with this is the mark scheme. Basically, the GCSEs are a collection of tests at the end of your year 11 UK, grade 10 Germany, sophomore year the States. God, see, this is why I can't learn other languages. I'm over here freaking translating school years. There's the GCSEs, which take place then, and those are a collection of tests for most, if not all, of your subjects. And then there's the IB exams, which are a collection of exams that happen in your last year of high school. So year 13, grade 12, senior year. So these exams are heavily weighted. This is like the big exam. This is what you're spending all your time working towards. You keep revising more or less the same information and then you're tested on it and those tests, you got mock exams, you got mock mock exams. So you're practicing for the practice test and you're taking the practice test and then you take the real test. So the big difference is that my classwork, my homework, the tests I take in class are such a low percentage of your grade that teachers will fail you for neck, like for missing a tick. I could write five pages of correct information, but if I'm missing a keyword, they'll be like, all right, 50%. And this wouldn't be a problem at all for me if I didn't maybe want to pursue a university experience in the States, because guess what they're going to look at? My coursework. But on a positive note, because I definitely want to reiterate that overall this has been the best experience of my life, I loved the school that I was going to for the past two and a half years. Best people, right? The program, not my thing, but really interesting people, both students and staff. Since it's an international school, there's a lot of different culture and stories and perspectives. And although I might have to like catch produce in my bag to save my life at the grocery store, um, None of that seems that, that big of a deal when you're surrounded by just like the most incredible people. So I hope that any of you guys who may live in Germany or do an exchange year over here or anywhere else in Europe will have the same experience or a similar one that I did because I would not trade it for anything. It has been a while since I filmed a sit down video and I just like talked. It was very nice for me. You guys are probably like, okay, shut up now. Thank you for being here and thank you for watching. And let me know if you want more of this style of content. Much love and stay tuned for future videos.